So can you have a Batman episode without his rogues villain? Apparently you can because this is the second episode that this <laughs> happens in. I love how Paul asks a question and just answers it right there. <laughs> Doesn't even give us a chance to chime in. Nope. He's like, no, fool. It's already happened done before. <laughs> it's it's already, call it a rhetorical question. It is, but it's already happened before and I, I'm... I'm it, I'm glad to see it happen again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not so because this one was such a great episode, but again, you could you can tell a story. You could tell a Batman story without having one of his main villains in it. I of, think you can. Of course. You've got plenty of crime in Gotham to be able to do it. And then what would what what do you guys think? Can you tell a good Batman story without having one of his main villains? Let us know in the comments. Like, subscribe, and follow. Because we're gonna be doing a lot more of these. Yeah. But anyways, this is called Appointment in Crime Alley. So this takes us back to where it all began. Mm -hmm. Takes us back to the origin of Batman. As an eight-year-old kid. Um, Little known fact, written by Gary Conway. Jerry Conway. Jerry Conway, I'm sorry. (laughs) Gary? Jerry? Yeah, no, it's just my brother. And it wasn't a a little known fact because it comes out in the title card. It says written by (laughs) Jerry Conway. So it's not really a little known fact. It's a little known fact because I'm seeing a pattern that all the Batman stories outside of the rogues villain are written by comic book writers. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, but they said it in the title card. Just say, anyways. Well. For those that don't know who Jerry Conway is. For those who don't know. For those who don't know who Jerry Conway is, he was the co-creator of Punisher, Ben Riley. Um, over at Marvel, and then Firestorm, Power Girl, Jason Todd, Killer Croc, main contributor and wrote The Death of Gwen Stacy. And one of my favorites, he wrote the Superman versus the Amazing Spider-Man Treasury Edition. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah. nice. Yeah, no, he's big time in the comic book. Like, this isn't yeah. anybody that... He was, he was getting there. He had the fact. He just yeah, didn't he let was, him get there. Yet. No, it's like Paul, like, <laughs> like Paul tells me, before I was rudely interrupted by Paul, <laughs> Jesus... But anyways, there's no rogues, there's no villain, there's no main villain here. Again, you got this mobster, not mobster, but uh, I guess it's like big oh, head yeah. of company kind you of got, mobster. You got Roland guy. Daggett again. Roland Daggett again. And, you know, he's got this plan to uh, blow up all the, the riffraff in, in, Crime, in Alley. Crime Alley so he can build, you know, new, brand new condos there because he wants to take it back to how that street used to be back in the day in its glory days. He wants to gentrify he the wants to, He wants to take it back to Park <laughs> Row. Yeah. Okay. At one point, Park Row was like the bee's knees of the city, and then it just went downhill, and now he's trying to get it back to that uh, to that famous... Which makes sense, because that's where the Waynes would go out. Right? Mm-hmm. They would take their son to go see a movie, and I mean, the, yeah, they were the elite of the elite of Gotham. This is where... This is where and, and, and we get a lot of iconography toward, towards the day that it happened, because when he goes and sees Leslie Thompson's sketchbook or scrapbook, mm-hmm. you see all the images from when... The crime happened. You see, like the the chalk outline of the bodies. Pa- Paul just went right to the end. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, I I don't go step by step like you do. Like you want to tell the whole story of the episode. No, but this is the first time also that we see Leslie Tompkins. Yeah. I know, but let me get to it. <laughs> I'm just gonna get to it He's in a different like, order. I'm gonna fly by and then I'm gonna gonna come back. I'm gonna come back. <laughs> For those of you that saw on YouTube, George was doing a fishing. He was reeling all back. He went and caught the fish and he's reeling you back. All right, go for it, Paul. <laughs> My bad. I apologize for interrupting. Go continue. Jimmy is has a problem with working out of order. Just kick him under the table. It's fine. <laughs> continue. Uh, continue, Paul. I wasn't gonna go into like the whole. No, was, like hold on. I wasn't gonna go into like the whole like step by step of it. Oh wait, hold on. We're we're gonna pay attention now. Go for it. No, no, I wasn't gonna go into like the whole step by step of it. I was gonna talk about the episode. Okay. Go. Why are you looking at me? Talk now? about the episode. <laughs> Jesus. Put him on the spot. Damn. Yes, you see at the end of the episode that Leslie Tompkins was the one that comforted Bruce Wayne. Well, you see that at the end of the episode, but midway through the episode when he sneaks into his up into her apartment, he finds a scrapbook. He finds a scrapbook yeah, finds when a you scrapbook see the images of the, the crime when it happened, of the newspaper clippings of when it happened. And it's foreshadowed beforehand by him having an appointment with her, which you don't know why. He has an appointment with her. Most importantly, you see that there's another another figure for Bruce that was there with him. Like it wasn't just Alfred. Correct. There was someone else that knows who he is and knows what happened to him and was there as he grew up. There was a motherly figure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um you can understand that when Alfred's like, You're gonna be late, he's like, Am I ever? Mm-hmm. Like this is the one thing he does not go late to. And it's a remembrance of his parents. And 
like I said, when when Leslie walks out of the of the building that the other lady tells her, be careful. She tells him, look, I've lived in Crime Alley for thirty years. I know how to handle myself. You 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 ask yourself, damn, why like where she, why who she meeting? Because you saw what Batman said. Now you see what she says. You obviously put together they're working or they're gonna go see each other. But in what under what conditions are they gonna see each other? No, but to finish off that line, she said, "This is my home." Right. Yeah. So it's home for her. I when I saw it now, I figured that they're getting together to talk about what's going on in Park Row, Crime Alley. I didn't. I I didn't put together that he and her were of history. Oh, had history, right? Mm-hmm. That's. I thought they were just gonna talk about the actual story, but it, you know, obviously, you find out that she knows who he is. Mm-hmm. Um, and leading into that, this is the first time we see like Batman training. Yeah. So, and it's funny because he goes from gymnastics to boxing. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's doing dips. Yeah. <laughs> so he goes into that whole everything situation. And it, it it showcases his strength because there's also the desperation moment where somebody in Crime Alley takes somebody hostage. Do you guys remember that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. On yeah, the billboard? Punch, he punches a friggin'. He punches a friggin'. But then he <clears> takes <throat> down two full grown men. On the, inside the back cave, inside the, back the cape, cape. yeah, <laughs> down the string, yeah, down the bat wire. It just goes. We t- we have mentioned this in the other, what we call non rogue centric episode, right. where Batman's carrying a full grown man and jumping roof to roof. We know Batman can pick up full grown people without a problem, but two. Now we're at two. Well, now yeah, we're, we're at, at two. two. Of course, <laughs> it was. I don't know. It was that 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 whole the the story was kind of wonky, and then when once you get to the point where he's. He takes care of those two guys, and then he's driving, and then the whole thing with the runaway trolley cart. If you see the time, because nine o'clock is always throughout the episodes when the bombs are going to go off. Yeah. If you see the time, it's like eight thirty nine, and then he gets he he handles the whole trolley incident like in two minutes, mm-hmm. like literally two minutes. If you look at the clocks, it's at two minutes. And you're like, come on, man, like really? Well, I mean, he drove his car in front of the trolley. I mean, how long is that going to take? Yeah, but he got there. <laughs> he got out of the car, tried to get into the freaking trolley. And then I guess he lost. He left his like back pick out because he wasn't he couldn't get in the door, so he just like quit, jumps back in the Batmobile, and then stops it. It's like, really, dude? Listen, we know Batman's strong. He does good cardio. <coughs> he can do all this stuff in thirty minutes. He can he can carry two grown ass men, but he can't kick open a trolley door. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's battle. Come sk- on, he skipped leg day. He skipped leg day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was doing dips, and then if you look at the Batmobile scene before he gets to the trolley, there's a lot of Batman 1989 vibes in there. Which makes sense. Which is the way they showcased it and the way he was driving out to it. Yes, I did catch that in the cinema. The two things that drew that drew my attention was when he uses the grappling hook to grab the lamppost to make the tight turn. Mm-hmm. And then after the car gets wrecked, the shields. Yes. How he puts the shields on. Yeah. Now the follow-up question is, do you see Batman like changing the tires? Or like, does he get like a tow truck or a flatbed to take the Batmobile back? Like, how does he get the car out of there? Those are run flats, man. Other than that, they flew off. Yeah, they that, just that's something that Alfred takes care of yeah. all while he's out doing other stuff. Oh yeah, while yeah. he's out sleeping or being Bruce. Like, Wayne. where do you where do you tell a tow truck tow, tow truck driver to take the the car? No, you just you just Alfred's gonna go get it. Yeah. Oh yeah, you see, <laughs> Bruce Wayne's butler gets in the Batmobile and takes it with him, <laughs> like un viejo just climbing over trying to get. Yeah, it, it was. It, because I mean, it's one of the few times that you actually see the Batmobile completely wrecked. Yeah, yeah. Other times, yeah, it gets hit, but you can still use it. But I mean, this one's completely gone. Yeah, yeah no, the wheels, the front wheels. Yeah, the tires flew off. Yeah. So I mean, and then <clears throat> yeah, Batmobile gets wrecked. Those yeah. are my notes. <laughs> and then Batman, you know, he's able to save Leslie. He find he finds the people that are that are planning on blowing up the uh, the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. With, whether there's people in there or not, they don't care. Right. They're they're gonna burn it all down and I blame it on a leaky gas pipe and the criminals actually turn daggett in like, yeah right there on the scene and then he's like cops take them away take you know away. yeah oh they were completely gonna narc on the I guy mean, come man. on man they're more scared of batman than they are they the were boss. completely narc on the guy and then they they take him away and then daggett just feels that empowered that you know that i'm untouchable and yeah. then you see batman's angry face and like, uh, i can't take this guy down and she's the one that says let it be. They'll get, you'll, you'll get it's it. It's not just the angry face. I, I like that when Roland then gets in his car, Batman kicks the the, the barrier. <laughs> yeah. <to> the like, <laughs> <laughs> so before all that, I don't know if you guys caught. You, I so I look a lot at the background to see if there are any Easter eggs. Daggett was giving a speech, waiting for the nine o'clock time to come. Mm-hmm. Over his head was just something that said BBC City. 
Swear to God. It says BBC and then City. I did not notice that. I was just like, huh. What does that mean? BBC? Yeah. <laughs> Let us know in the comments. The Let British Paul know. Broadcasting Company City. Let Paul know in the comments what BBC <laughs> okay. means. Okay. And then we wrap it up by him placing two flowers on the spot where his parents died. Yes. With Leslie. With Leslie. Real quick. Episode top five. So no. far, this is episode 11. It, it, put it in my top 10. Maybe number 10. Yeah, now. top ten maybe lowest okay. until more episodes come out. Lowest for yeah. now, but it was it was a, it was a strong episode. I think it was a stronger. It was one of the strongest non. Oh, strong! It wasn't as strong as the previous mm-hmm. non Rogue one. But let us know in the comments below. Wow, that was a hell of a podcast, guys! Make sure if you like this content and more to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Until next time.